I'm going to explain harmonic functions and strong relative mins and maxes. And the key thing is we're looking at uh, what's happening to the harmonic function on a region G. Recall that a region G has to be open. Uh, so, so I can't include the boundary. So what this theorem means is if you are harmonic on a closed, uh, you know, closed part of the complex plane, uh, if you want a min or a max, then is, if it's connected anyway, you want to look at the boundary. The boundary is going to contain the, the biggest and the smallest parts. And we're going to graphically look at several examples. I'm going to show you two harmonic functions. One is just x. One is x squared minus y squared. I'm going to show you two non-harmonic functions. x squared is not harmonic, and x squared plus y squared is not harmonic. So let's see what happens when we graph these. So I'm going to use uh, the software Python, or uh, sorry, Sage, which is just gorgeous, and it's free. So let's just first of all define a function x, and I'm just going to plot it from in an open box. This is basically the easiest function that you can think of. So imagine that this is our region from negative 1 to negative 1 and from 1 to 1. Basically a little square in the complex plane, except it has to be open. So notice that the smallest value it takes on is going to be at this edge here, and the biggest value it takes on is at this edge here. In between, there's no, there's no point that's going to be the biggest point anywhere around. Remember, we're not allowed to include these edges here because the set has to be open. So any point you pick in here, what, even if it's close to the edge, there's always going to be a smaller point around it, and there's always going to be a bigger point around it. Uh, this is because it's a harmonic function. Uh, harmonic functions only allow, are only allowed to have uh, mins and maxes on the boundaries, roughly speaking. So let's look at a second example. Second example, x squared minus y squared. So let's just change the example here. Let's plot x squared minus y squared. You're going to see the same thing. I think I'll just put this over here. So once again, the biggest point anywhere happens right at the boundary. Happens right at the boundary. And if you look at, if you pick any other point, you can always go a little bit higher. This is a saddle point, right? So you can always go up the saddle this way and get bigger. If you're right there, you go up the saddle like that. If you're right here, you go up the saddle like that. But you can also go smaller. You can go down the saddle as well. So there's no point where it's going to be the biggest or the smallest anywhere. Um, so this is one property of a harmonic function. All right. Well, let's take a look at a couple non-harmonic functions. Let's look at x squared. Let's plot it. Sage is great. It's also free. This is not a harmonic function. And look, in this open interval, it actually has a min. The min happens kind of all along this line right here. It doesn't have a max. The max occurs kind of on the boundaries. But on the interior, you do actually have a min. So, so it actually does work out. Um, it, it works out that this, uh, work out, I mean, this is not a harmonic function that has a strong uh, relative min. So that's an example from there. And finally, let's look at another example. Let's subtract off y squared. I'm just doing the easy ones. I actually only hit caps lock. And I can't type. Ah, squared. There we go. Let's plot this. Once again, we're going to see that this might. Oh, let's actually do the right function. We already did that one. That one is harmonic. We want the one that's not harmonic. Sorry about that. So here we have, look, this clearly has a min right smack in the middle right there. Right smack in the middle. So you have, to summarize, you have these two non-harmonic functions, and they actually do have mins or maxes. You can do negative x squared minus y squared if you wanted a max, right smack in the middle. Whereas the two harmonic functions don't have mins or maxes, right? The saddle point is neither a min nor a max, if you remember from multivariable calculus. That's the only point that would make sense. These, the mins and the maxes, occur on the boundaries. That's the important idea to take from this. Thank you.